So, in the last lecture, we saw an example of how uh, you know we can compute the uh, value functions using uh, TDF tables. Right? So, today I want to uh, you know in this lecture, I want to take you through a one specific thing, right? So, I want to look at uh, MC updates right, versus TD updates. So, how does Monte Carlo work and how does TD work? Now, assuming that you are given the same set of trajectory, same experience between Monte Carlo and TD. So, we want to see how uh, you know what will be the value function learned by Monte Carlo and what will be the value function learned by TD. Are they the same or are they different? This is something that we look at. Right? So, for the purposes of doing this, I am going to introduce what is called as a batch TD, right? batch TD updates. That means that I am going to take a set of experiences, right? By, by experience, I mean episodes, right? So I'm going to take a set of episodes or trajectories and keep repeatedly applying the TD updates, just as if these trajectories are playing over and over and again, right? Until these uh, updates converge to a specific value. So I'll take a set of trajectories, keep applying TD again and again, right? Until the trajectories uh, until, until the value functions converge to some value right and that's patch td and uh, monte carlo updates which again as you know is uh, taking the average of the returns that you are going to get after the uh, in this case we'll use first visit after the first occurrence of the uh, uh, um, state in the trajectory right so let's take a set of trajectories now so i'm going to assume in, assume that there are uh, uh, two states right and i'm not I'm, I'm, the policy is fixed right so i'm not really worried about what actions i'm taking I'm just going to look at uh, uh, the states here. So let's say I have two states A and B, right? And so here are my set of trajectories. I I do A, then I get a reward of zero, then I do B, I get a reward of zero, and then I terminate, right? So it's basically A zero, B zero, and it terminates. Then I start in B, I get a reward of one, and I terminate. Right? I start in B. We get a reward of zero and determine it. That's that's the basically the entire trajectory. Then there's another trajectory where I start in A, right? I get a reward of one. I go to B. I get a reward of zero and determine it. Right? Then I start in B. I get a reward of one and determine it. Start in B. I get a reward of one and determine it. Okay. Let's say that these are the trajectories that I have. It has these six trajectories, right? So, sometimes I start in A, sometimes I start in B and then sometimes I terminate from B with a reward of 0, sometimes I terminate from B with a reward of 1, okay. So, I am going to uh, uh, make a small change here, yeah, that should be fine, right. So, the last trajectory I changed, right? so after B I get a reward of 0 and I terminate, right. So, that is basically what I have and then let us assume that uh, because everything is terminating fine and all that, so we will use a gamma of 1, right. So, I do not have any discounting, I will say gamma is 1 because all the trajectories that I have are terminating. So, let us see what happens with Monte Carlo updates, right. So, what are the things I should look at? The trajectories where a particular state has occurred. So, let us uh, computing VA, right. So, what are the two trajectories uh, where A has occurred? This and this. And uh, in the first case, the return was 0, and the second case, the return is 1, right. So, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. So, the second case is 1. So, I will add these 2, right, and divide by 2. So, value of A is 0.5, right. What value of B? Right. So, value of B is all the trajectories in which B has occurred. So, all 6 trajectories B has occurred and in sum you have a 0. So, it is basically there are 6 trajectories in which B has happened. So, 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 by 6. So, that is 2 by 6 that is basically 1 by 3. The value of B is 1 by 3 by this process and value of A is 0.5 by this process, okay. Now, let us look at how the TD updates will work. The way TD works, remember how would I compute TD updates? I will actually say V of A is equal to you know the expected value of R plus gamma times V of B, right. 
that is how it will work right. So, r uh, v of a has to be so the reward plus right the expected value of reward plus v of b because every time I go to b right. So, in this case uh, sometimes I will get a 0, sometimes I get a 1 right. So, the expected reward that I am going to get for going from a to b will be so, half the times I got a 0, half the times got a 1. So, the expected reward from going from A to B will be 0 0.5, right. So, this will be 0 0.5 plus gamma times V of B, which I do not know yet. Okay? But if you look at all the trajectories that we have had, right, right after V of B, we immediately terminate, right. Right after seeing B, we terminate, right. There is no future reward. So, it is basically the expected reward that I will get after visiting B, I mean that because there is no next state, right? There is always termination. So, it will be just the expected reward after getting uh, after visiting B. And since B was always the last state, it will be equal to the ex expected return. So, this is equal to 1 by 3, right? So, now I plug this in here. So, I basically get the value of A is 0.5 plus 1 by 3, which is ah. Huh. It is very different from the Monte Carlo estimate that we got for V of A, right. So, the Monte Carlo estimate we got for V of A said 0.5 because it was the average of all the returns that we got after seeing uh, uh, A, right. So, in one case we had a return of 0, other case we had a return of 1, therefore we had a return of 0.5, right. And uh, but in here it is R plus gamma times the value of the next state, right? That's how we uh, we write the, uh, uh, the value function of a, right? So it will always be r plus. I mean, I can I can do this update, right? I can do this repeated update, but remember, I'm iterating till I converge, right? So when will I converge? I'll converge when the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, and that will happen when v of a equal to r plus gamma times v of b, right? This is this is basically. Remember, I am trying to you know get the answer to the Bellman equation by doing this iteratively, right. Therefore, uh, the answer would be when this converges, right. So, that is basically what we have here. So, this is r, this is 0.5, and uh, this is uh, going to be uh, gamma, which is 1 times v of v, which is one third, which is 0.33. So, it is actually get 0.833 as a value of a. Right? So, in so another way of thinking about the TD approach. Is, the, is that it is implicitly forming a MDP, even though I have not given you the MDP, I have given you only the samples from an MDP, right. So, this, these are only samples from an MDP, right. This I have not told you what MDP is, but TD implicitly is forming an MDP. So, where there is A, right, and then there is B, and then there are let us say two terminal states, just to make life easier for us. So, this has a reward of plus 1, this has a reward of 0, right, and this has a probability of uh, 1 by 3 of going here and a two probability of 2 by 3 of going here and you go from A to B and you have a probability of 1 of making the transition and you get an average reward of 0 0.5, right. So, this is basically the implicit MDP, right. So, you have two states A and B and you have an action that takes you from A to B with probability 1 but with the expected reward of 0.5 and then you have an action that takes you from B to the terminal state uh, with probability 2 by 3, right and you get a reward of 0 and then you have an action that uh, from B that you take with probability 1 by 3 that takes you to another terminal state where you get a reward of plus 1. So, we do not, I mean, you do not have to distinguish between these, you could just say there is a single terminal state with an expected reward of 1 by 3, it does not matter, right. But this is the MDP that you are implicitly constructing when you are solving for TD. So, when you are doing rep repeatedly doing this, uh, this is the solution that you get. Now, which is correct? Is the Monte Carlo the correct solution or the TD the correct solution? Okay. So, this happens only because we have a finite set of uh, data on which we have been iterating and trying to solve the problem given this finite data. So, if you have enough data, right, I mean lots and lots and lots of sample an indefinite uh, amount of sample right if you have uh, uh, actually infinite amount of sample then both monte carlo and td will converge to the same answer right if not what monte carlo converges to is the uh, the the least squares 
estimate right the min minimum least squared estimate of the return. So, what the um, Monte Carlo updates when we re repeatedly do this until you convert right basically gives you the uh, MLE right um, the, the, the least squares uh, right uh, it gives you the least squares estimate of the return right and um, is that the right one perhaps because that is the best that you can say in terms of what the what the uh, value should be from A and behaving according to policy pi without making any assumptions about the domain itself right. And what TD gives is sometimes called as the sometimes called as the certainty equivalence uh, uh, estimate. So, that basically uh, it is the estimate that is correct assuming that you have the the MLE estimate of the MDP parameters given the data that you have. So, you already are given some data. From that, I am trying to say what is the uh, you know MDP that could have generated this data right and then I am estimating the parameters uh, or basically the value functions corresponding to that estimated MDP right. So, that is why it is called certainty equivalence is sometimes called certainty equivalence estimate and I would say it is a very very nice concept in the sense that uh, without ever actually constructing the MDP, without estimating the parameters of the MDP, when I do TD update on a set of data, it actually converges to the value function on the MDP, right. While the Monte Carlo updates converge to what is called as the least squares estimate for the return, both are correct, right, under different uh, assumptions, both are correct, and given infinite amount of data, both will converge to the same answer. And uh, so, this just for something for you to keep in mind whenever you are running into this kind of finite data problems, right. So, uh, MC versus TD can give you different results, right? just, just uh, keep that in mind, okay.